Hello, I am Dr. Wafai Bedawi, consultant histopathologist. I'll be talking about gestational trophoblastic diseases, part one. Definition of gestational trophoblastic disease. It is an abnormality of pregnancy that encompasses a group of diseases that differ from each other in their propensity for regression, invasion, metastasis, and recurrence. They constitute a spectrum of tumors and tumor-like conditions characterized by proliferation of pregnancy-associated trophoblastic tissue of progressive malignant potential. Modified WHO classification of gestational trophoblastic disease. Hydati deformed moles abnormally formed placentas, including complete Hydati deformed mole, partial Hydati deformed mole, invasive mole. Gestational trophoblastic neoblasms include choriocarcinoma, placental site trophoblastic tumor, epithelioid trophoblastic tumor, trophoblastic tumor like lesions, that is, benign lesions, including exaggerated placental site placental site nodule or black, unclassified trophoblastic lesions, abnormal non-molar villous lesions. Types of gestational trophoblastic diseases. It depends on the presence or absence of villi with villi including hydati deform mole, complete hydati T deform mole, partial mole, invasive mole, persistent mole, corangiocarcinoma, without villi including placental site nodules and blugs, placental site trophoblastic tumor, epithelioid trophoblastic tumor, choriocarcinoma. Hida T deform mole. Definition and general background. They are one of the most common but benign forms of gestational trophoblastic diseases. It is estimated to occur in one of every 1,000 to 2,000 pregnancies. They are almost always occur in the reproductive, reproductive age group, although rare cases occur in postmenopausal women. Familiar recurrent Hida T deform mole represents less than 2% of all Hida T deform moles. It occurs in complete mole. Hida T deform mole is characterized by variable trophoblastic proliferation, cystic swelling of the chorionic villi. They are subdivided into complete hydatidi form mole, partial hydatidi form mole. These two forms of hydatidi form mole have different cytogenetic patterns that are accompanied by different clinical pathologic profiles and different degrees of risk for 
the development of gestational trophoblastic neoplasm. Increase, increase the beta HCG that is more than 100,000 MIU per ml. It is more uh, it is more incomplete mole. Risk factors. They include personal or family history of gestational trophoblastic disease, two or more previous spontaneous abortions, infertility, smoking, increased maternal age as the risk increases prog progressively for women over 40 years. Complete hydatidiform mole, CHM. General background. A complete hydatidiform mole is the commonest type of gestational trophoblastic disease. It shows a non-invasive diffuse swelling involving most of the chorionic villi, that is, grape-like villi. The complete mole is diploid and diandric, that is androgenetic diploidy, meaning that both genomic complements are of paternal origin, that is, two sets of paternal chromosomes. Complete mole results from fertilization of an empty, that is a nuclear, ovum that lacks functional maternal DNA. It, the <clears throat> complete Haida TD form moles are not compatible with imperiogenesis and never contain a fetus or fetal parts. In other words, paternal chromosomes are enough to form placental tissue, but not a fetus. Complete Haida TD form moles usually occupy the uterine cavity and rarely located in fallopian tubes or ovaries. Genetic basis of complete hydatidiform moles. All the chromosomes are derived from a single haploid, 23X sperm, in which the haploid genome duplicates or formed by a dispermy that is fertilization of an ovum lacking functional maternal chromosomes by two spermatozoa. Approximately 90% of complete hydatidiform moles have a 46XX diploid chromosomal pattern, with approximately 10% having a 46XY composition. Rare complete Haida TD form familiar recurrent are characterized by, by parental diploid. This may be related to maternal mutations in L, NLRP7 or KHDC3L. Monospermic CHM, a single sperm with 23X fertilizes an empty ovum, a nuclear ovum, chromosomal duplication, 
leads to 46xx. Dispermic CHM, two sperms, each one is 23, either X or Y, fertilize an empty ovum, it may result in 46XX or 46XY. Maternal recessive mutations in NLRP7, 75% or KHDC3L, 5% are, are associated with familial biparental recurrent HIDA TD4 mole. Here, single sperm. 23, uh, either X or Y, fertilizes an ovum from an individual with NLRP7 or KHDC3L mutations. It results in 46XX or 46XY. It is that is by parental diploid CHM. What is what is the recurrent gestational trophoblastic disease? It is a new episode of gestational trophoblastic disease after complete post-chemotherapy remission. It is evidenced by re-elevation of serum HCG after three consecutive weekly normal values. Familiar recurrent hydatid deform mole represents less than 2% of all hydatid deform moles. It occurs in complete mole. It is associated with maternal recessive mutations in NLRP7 or KHDC3L. Clinical presentations of CHM. Classic presentation. Second trimester vaginal bleeding. A large four dates uterus. Passage of molar vesicles in some cases. Uncommon manifestations. Preeclampsia in early gestation, less than 20 weeks gestation. Hyperemesis gravidarum. Hyperthyroidism. Hyperreaction leutinalis. Metastasis to lung or vagina. Ultrasound. It may be seen as an intrauterine central heterogeneous mass with numerous discrete and echoic spaces without any associated fetal parts. The multiple cystic structures classically give a snow storm or bunch of grapes type appearance. However, it may be difficult to diagnose in the first trimester and may appear similar to a normal pregnancy or as an empty gestational sac. Ultrasound and MRI of theca leutein cysts. Theca leutein cyst hyperreaction leutinalis are the largest of the functional cysts 
that is a rare benign physiological ovarian enlargement and appear as very large bilateral multiliculated cystic masses. They are associated with high levels of human chorionic gonadotropin, HTCG. They are seen most frequently in association with gestational trophoblastic diseases in 30%. Similar cysts, see arrow, arrowheads, occur in normal pregnancies, so uh, she uh, see short arrow, especially multiple gestations and in some patients being treated with infertility drugs the, uh, that is cases of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome particularly with pergonal these cysts may undergo hemorrhage rupture and torsion Both ovaries are enlarged by, enlarged by multiple thin-walled cysts. The cysts are lined by luteinized granulosa cells of lying luteinized theca cells. The interfollicular stroma is edematous and may con also contain luteinized stromal cells. Gross appearance of CHM. Here we see complete mole in which the entire uterine cavity is filled with grape-like swollen villi. Specimens of complete hydra TD form are usually bulky with numerous transparent grape-like swollen villi up to 2 cm in diameter. No gestational sac, amnion, umbilical cord, or, or fetal tissue. This is another case showing uterine cavity filled with grape-like vesicles. All villi are markedly swollen with thin translucent wall with clear fluid. The villi are, are from 1 to 3 mm in diameter and appear grape-like. Microscopic appearance of CHM Individual molar villi, many of which have cavitated central cisterns, exhibit considerable circumferential trophoblastic hyperplasia along with a tibia. The blood vessels of the villi have atrophied and disappeared, that is, a vascular villi. Here we can see a large molar villus with a cistern and circumferential trophoblastic hyperplasia. Here we see early complete hydatidiform form mole that is less than 12 weeks gestational age with club like villi. Here we see a villus in lower left, exhibit marked hyperplasia of cyto and syncytial trophoblasts. There is also marked proliferation of extra villus trophoblast with striking nuclear tibia. Paternally imprinted genes P57. The complete hydra T deformed molds 
Characteristically lack maternal chromosomes. Paternally imprinted genes such as P57 in which only maternal allele is expressed are not expressed in villous trophoblasts of androgenetic derived complete mole. P57 immunohistochemistry. In a complete mole, the villous cytotrophoblast and stromal cells are completely negative for P57. The normal P57 immunoreactivity of the extra villous trophoblast and maternal decidua serves as a positive internal control. Here we see complete absence of P57 immunostaining within cytotrophoblastic cells and villous stromal cells. Maternal decidualized stromal cells in the left and intermediate trophoblast epitom center serve as a, pos a positive internal control. Here too, fluorescent in situ hybridization. Fish for HER2 may be a useful ancillary study to aid in the diagnosis and classification of HIDA TD form moles. Here we see two HER2 signals in the center cell suggesting deployed DNA content, that is fish analysis. Behavior of CHM Persistent gestational trophoblastic disease occurs in 15 to 20% of CHM requiring chemotherapy. Postmolar choriocarcinoma occurs in 2 to 3% of cases. 100% cure rates are achieved in the patients who have non-metastatic disease, good prognosis metastatic disease, pulmonary, pulmonary or vaginal metastasis, HCG levels less than 40 thousandths MIU per ml, short duration of disease, cure rates of more than 80% have been achieved even in patients with bad prognosis metastatic disease such as to the brain, liver, kidney metastasis, HCG levels more than 40,000 MIU per ml, gestational tumor after a term gestation. Risk factors for persistent mole. Hallmarks are failure of HCG levels to normalize after initial, after initial evacuation and residual molar villi in a repeat curettage that is persistent hydatidiform mole. Inv invasive mole chorioadenoma dysteruans occurs in 5% to 10% of CHMs. Postmolar choriocarcinoma occurs in 2 to 3% of cases. The risk increases with maternal age more than 40 years, previous molar pregnancy, pre-evacuation serum HCG levels of more than 100,000 MIU per ml, pre-evacuation uterine size large for deaths 
or larger than 20 weeks gestation, medical complications of molar pregnancy such as the presence of hyperreactionalis, preeclampsia, hyperthyroidism, trophoblastic impuli. Partial hydatiti form mole. General background. It accounts for approximately 15% to 35% of all moles. Almost all partial hydatiti form moles have diandric triploidy, two paternal sets, and one maternal set of chromosomes. Fetuses associated with a partial mole are typically growth retarded and usually die after 10 weeks of gestation. Moles are aborted shortly thereafter, thus fetal parts may be present. The usual presentation is Bleeding in the late first or early second trimester as a missed or incomplete apportion. A uterus is small or normal for deaths. An HCG level that is usually low to normal for gestational age, although rarely it is as high as in complete Hida TD4 moles. Genetic basis of PHM. Almost all of almost all PHMS have dianderic triploidy, two paternal sets and one maternal set of chromosomes. Rarely they are tetraploid three sets of paternal chromosomes and one set and one maternal set. Most have a 69 triple X, XXX or 69 XXY karyotype and a few show trisomy 16. This abnormal chromosomal complement results from Fertilization of a normal ovum 23X by two spermatozoa, each with 23 chromosomes, or a single spermatozoon that failed meiotic reduction and has 46 chromosomes. That is a reduplicated paternal haploid genome. Here we see dispermic PHM, two sperms, each is 23 either X or Y, fertilized and a, a, a normal ovum with 23X, they results in 69XXX or 69XXY or 69XYY. That is diandric triploidy. Monospermic partial hydatid deformed mole, a single sperm with haploid 23, either X or Y, fertilizes a normal ovum with 23X, paternal chromosomal duplication occurs, resulting in 69XXX. 69XXY, 69XYY, that is dianderic triploidy. 
ultrasound of PHM. Here we see transvaginal image of the uterus showing the vesicular tissue and the fetus. Some partial, partial moles can have sonographic appearances indistinguishable from those of the common complete moles. That is a snowstorm or bunch of grapes type appearance. Gross appearance of partial hydatidiform moles. Here we see all scattered grape like villi. In other words, the molar pattern did not involve the entire placenta. Here we see partial mole with attached fetus. The diagnosis was confirmed by biopsy and flow cytometry. Although fetuses in partial moles are growth retarded, here the fetus showed no abnormality and was connected to the mole by a normal umbilical cord. Here we see scattered grape-like masses with intervening normal appearing spongy pale red placental tissue. The grape-like masses are not as large as the masses seen with a complete mole. Microscopic features of partial hydatidiform mole. Microscopically, the whole mark of par a partial mole is a mixture of two populations of large edematous villi and small normal sized villi without edema. Evidence of early fetal development is common and includes stromal blood vessels with nucleated erythrocytes, ectatic anastomosing and gematoid villous vessels, which occur in 20% of second trimester PHM. Other fetal tissues may include chorionic plate, amnion, umbilical cord, and fetal parts, which may be malformed. There are two populations of villi comprised of small fibrotic villi, large hydrobic villi with scalloped outlines, not villus with a central acellular cistern. Not here in this photo, no trophoblastic inclusions, trophoblastic invaginations, and syncytial trophoblastic knuckles. In this photo, we see ectatic anastomosing and angiomatoid villus vessels. It occurs in 20% of second trimester partial hydatidiform moles. Heterogeneity in villa size with two discrete, discrete populations of villi, small fibrotic villi, and, and large hydropic villi. Here we see in large villi are, which are irregularly shaped with scalloped borders and secondary trophoblastic pseudo-inclusions. Hydrobic, hydrobic villi with cistern formation. Here in this photo we see a partial mole demonstrating a mixture of small villi and large hydrobic villi with irregular scalloped outline. 
not multiple trophoblastic inclusions, pseudo inclusions formed by invagination of the surface of the villi into the stroma. Here, a partial mole demonstrating mild irregular trophoblastic proliferation with from villus surface. The hyperplasia is usually more mild and focal than complete hydatidiform moles. Primitive fetal nucleated red blood cells are generated in the yolk sac mesoderm and remain the predominant blood cell type in the embryonic circulation until 10 weeks after conception. Impartial hydatidiform mole nucleated RBCs, that is, fetal cells, are detected in blood vessels after 10 weeks of gestation. CD71, it is also called the transferring receptor marker, is an effective marker for erythroid precursors. CD71 is a membrane protein expressed on nucleated red blood cells and trophoblasts. Nucleated RBCs are not detected in complete moles by means of either morphology or immunohistochemistry. P57 immunohistochemistry. In contrast to complete hydatidity form moles, the nuclei of most of cytotrophoblastic cells and villous stromal cells are strongly immunoreactive for P57. Partial mole HER2 fluorescent in situ hybridization. Fish for HER2 may be a useful ancillary study to aid in the diagnosis and classification of Hida TD4 moles. Here we see three HER2 signals in the center cell suggesting triploid DNA content. Behavior of PHM. Persistence occur in less than 1% of cases. Re-reported PHM associated complications include invasive mole, metastatic mole, choriocarcinoma, placenta trophoblastic tumor. The differential diagnosis of a hydatidiform mole, complete or partial, usually includes early non-molar pregnancy, including trisomy placentas. Abnormal non-molar villous lesions. They are a category recognized by the WHO and defined and are defined as various non-molar villous lesions with histological features simulating a partial hydatidiform mole. The morphology has a similar spectrum to a PHM with villous irregularity in size and shape, varying degrees of trophoblastic hyperplasia with occasional syncytiotrophoblastic buds or snouts. Scalloped villous outlines and rarely trophoblastic inclusions. These morphologic characteristics can be manifest of hydrobic apportion, 
diagenic triploid conceptions, that is diagenic mono and direct conceptasis, and chromosomal trisomy syndromes. Non-molar tubal pregnancies can be misdiagnosed as hydatidiform moss due to the presence of hydrobic villi, sheets of extravillous trophoblast, and in some cases invasion of tubal wall. DNA genotyping typing is encouraged for distinction between PHM and these diagnoses. With regard to the differential diagnosis between partial mole and hydrobic abortion, in the later gross villous swelling and sustained formation are not present. As already stated, the villous trophoblast in spontaneous abortions either is attenuated or, if proliferating, has a polar distribution. It means confined to the villous tips. Furthermore, trophoblastic atibia is absent or minimal. DNA flow cytometry for ploidy assessment and FISH for HER2 new studies, that is genotypic analysis, are of great assistance in the evaluation of this problem with triploidy favoring a diagnosis of partial mole. However, the genotypic analysis is not widely available and is relatively expensive, so the diagnosis of molar pregnancy is still based largely on routine histology with liberal use of P57 immunostaining. Microscopic features. Here in these two photos, we see hydrobic villi, balloon-like distended villi with hydrobic change from a miscarriage showing diffusely attenuated trophoblast that is, no trophoblastic hyperplasia seen. Here we see hydrobic villi, balloon-like distended villi with hydrobic change from a miscarriage showing diffusely attenuated trophoblast, no trophoblastic hyperplasia. Some villi may show normal polar or apical cytotrophoblast and or intermediate trophoblast. Sustained formation is usually absent or rare and less than 3 mm. This case demonstrates the overlapping, overlapping morphologic features with PM, PHM and the importance of genotype testing. Here we see villous irregularity in size and shape with hydrobic forms. Fetal tissue in the left side and trophoblastic inclusions are seen. Genotyping confirmed by parental diploidy, non-molar aportus. It is important to note that the pattern of P57 immunostaining with ex expression in cytotrophoblastic cells and villous mesenchyme serves serves to distinguish between complete and partial mole, but is not helpful in the distinction between par partial mole and hydrobic abortion. Significant inter 
observer and intra observer variability exists in the histologic diagnosis of hydrobic abortus partial hydatidity for mole and complete hydatidity for mole even among experienced gynecologic pathologists when the histologic diagnosis is uncertain and unresolved by p57 staining molecular genotyping typing can be diagnostic typically showing by parental diploidy in non-molar specimens dianderic diploidy in phms androgenetic diploidy in chms features of complete and partial hydatidity for mole we compared bet between them karyotype diploid 46xx or 46xy triploid 69 XXY or XXX Villas edema All villi Some villi Trophoblast proliferation Diffuse and circumferential Focan and slight Serum HCG Elevated Less elevated or normal Tissue HCG strongly positive. It is positive, weakly positive. Choriocarcinoma occurs in 2%. It is rare. Invasive Hida TD form mole. Definition and general background It is the most common form of persistent or metastatic gestational trophoblastic disease after Hida T deformed mole. It occurs 6 to 10 times more frequently than choriocarcinoma. It is defined as molar gestation invading myometrium and or uterine vessels. It is nearly always of the complete type, but occasionally of the partial, partial type. Commonly presents with vaginal bleeding and persistent elevation of HCG. Commonly diagnosed after primary evacuation of complete or partial mole, rarely diagnosed on imaging before molar evacuation. Extra uterine spread to lungs, vagina, vulva, and broad ligament occurs, occurs in 20 to 40 percent of cases. Rarely spreads to paraspinal soft tissue. Invasive mole is almost almost never diagnosed by endometrial biopsy or curettage. Chemotherapy is highly effective with 80% cure rate, but hysterectomy may be indicated in some circumstances. MRI of invasive mole. Here we see myometrial invasion by a predominantly hyperintense heterogeneous endometrial lesion at the fundus, at the fundus with no clear demarcation of the junctional zone of the uterus. It may be associated with bilateral ovarian thecal lutein cyst hyperreactive lutinalis. 
Sagittal T2 weighted image after methotrexate treatment shows interval decrease in the size of the mass, see the arrow, and in its signal intensity. Sagittal cadolinium enhanced fat suppressed the T1 weighted image after methotrexate treatment shows interval decrease in the degree of enhancement of the mass. See the arrow. Gross appearance of invasive mole. Invasive moles present as an erosive hemorrhagic lesion extending from the uterine cavity into the myometrium. Invasion can range from Superfic superficial penetration to extension through the wall with uterine perforation and life-threatening hemorrhage. Molar vesicles are often grossly apparent. Here we see molar villi penetrating the uterine wall. Microscopic appearance of invasive mole. Here we see hydrobic villi covered by proliferating trophoblast permeating the myometrium in this invasive mole. Within the myometria wall, there are several enlarged molar villi surrounded by concentric trophoblastic proliferation. Differential diagnosis of pers persistent gestational trophoblastic disease. Differential diagnosis of persistent elevation of serum HCG following curettage of molar pregnancy is invasive mole versus choriocarcinoma, both of which respond to chemotherapy. Tissue diagnosis is not often clinically indicated in this situation. It should be mentioned that invasive mole is distinguished from the usual mole by its invasiveness and from choriocarcinoma by the presence of villi, which also present in the metastatic fossae. The degree of trophoblastic proliferation in invasive mole does not differ significantly from that of its ordinary counterpart. After hydatidiform mole has been evacu evacuated, a, a subsequent curettage may be done for persistence or elevation of follow-up HCG tits or for significant uterine bleeding. If the specimen contains pers persistent hydatidiform mole, it will show residual molar villi mixed with trophoplast. Usually the amount of tissue and villi are greatly Reduce the compared to the original curettage specimen, but if the lie are present, the diagnosis remains that of persistent intracavitary cavitary mole. However, the trophoblastic proliferation may be exuberant. Here in these two photos. We see prominent trophoblastic proliferation with a tibia extending from the surface of a villus found in curettage specimen after evacuation of a hydatidiform mole. This should be diagnosed as persistent hydatidiform mole. Management of Hida T deformed mole. They are treated 
treated by evacuation of the uterus with follow-up serial beta HCG tests until undetectable levels are obtained. Highly effective means of contraception are recommended to avoid pregnancy for at least 6 to 12 months as 10% to 30% of complete moles and 0.5% to 4% of partial moles are result in persistent or metastatic gestational trophoblastic disease, for example, choriocarcinoma and invasive mole, as evidenced by a plateau or rise in HCG tits or the presence of extrauterine disease. If the titre is plateau or rise, gestational trophoblastic neoplasia is diagnosed and the patient receives the chemotherapy such as methotrexate. These are the references. Thank you.